um, because borrowing, you know, increases economic activity. It brings uh, it brings consumption forward. You borrow so that you can spend money now, rather than wait till you actually have the money. And so, when uh, when credit tends to freeze, uh, there is an immediate effect on expenditures, and therefore. Uh, output begins to fall, and there's unemployment, and you're in a downward uh, spiral. And that, I think, is 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 what happened. The combination of deregulation and um, uh, uh, very low interest rates. Uh, so that's my explanation. Uh, uh, Mr. Wallison's is very different, and. Uh, I'll give you my understanding. He, he may obviously wish to to alter that. Um, oh, I do want to add, I do want to ask I do want to add one point though. Why this has been so severe an economic contraction, and the reason is that um, when house prices were rising and when common stocks were rising, when in fact we had an as a general asset price inflation because of these very low interest rates, I think the Federal Reserve was fooled. It pushed down interest rates very, uh, uh, very far, and was criticized, for example, by the Wall Street Journal's editorial page. And uh, a concern was expressed that there would be inflation, you flood the economy with cash because they have very low interest rates. Um, then, then in the inflation danger looms. But partly because of a lot of cheap uh, uh, imports from China, there wasn't much inflation in the consumer price index. What there was was asset price inflation. Inflationary forces got deflected into stocks and into houses, and their prices rose artificially. And that was not realized until too late. But what happened to make this so serious is that people, people's savings became increasingly constant concentrated in their, ho in their house or succession of houses or multiple houses and in uh, common stock, either directly or indirectly, college savings plans, health savings plans, 401ks, and so on. So when the crash came, big fall in housing prices, big fall in stock prices last September, then people feel poorer. Their savings have been dramatically depleted. When people feel poorer, they tend to freeze. They tend to they spend less. They try to build up their cautionary savings, and so uh, you have a big fall in in uh, personal consumption expenditures, and of course that leads to fall in output, unemployment, and you're in a spiral. The unemployed, they have lower incomes. People who are still employed, they're worried they may be unemployed next, so they uh, contract. And the banks, their solvency is impaired, so they freeze. And in fact, there's been tremendous hoarding of cash by banks, which I don't criticize at all. But, you know, banks um, have required reserves, cash required by regulatory authorities. And if they have any more cash, it's called excess reserves, doesn't earn any, anything, so usually excess reserves are very, very low. Uh, a year ago, they were only, for the whole American banking industry, only $2 billion in excess reserves. Now it's $800 billion. So they're sitting on all this cash. They're afraid to lend because, because it's a depression. Who wants to lend in a depression? person comes to you and say, well, I'll be happy to pay 50% interest. I need the money. Well, obviously, you're not going to lend to that person. And people don't want to borrow. If they feel over indebted, and their savings are depleted, they don't want to borrow. Businesses that have curtailed their operations are going to borrow less. Anyway, my theory. So I'll take a um, couple of minutes to offer my understanding of Mr. Wallison's uh, different theory. He assigns a, a primary role in, in our economic uh, dilemma to these two government-sponsored enterprises, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And what these are, these are gigantic mortgage banks. They were private until last September when they were taken over by the government. They're sponsored, they were, so before that, they're sponsored by the government in some mysterious way, but they were actually uh, a private companies, private shareholders, private management, and so on. And their business was to buy uh, uh, home mortgages, and also they were pioneers in, in securitization, which means basically issuing bonds that are backed by, by mortgages. 
And um, I, I hold Mr. Wallison is a, is a fierce enemy of Freddie May, uh, I mean Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. I, I I have absolutely no brief for these two a giant government sponsored Goliaths. I don't understand the homo. I don't understand the ownership society. Uh, philosophy of President Bush. I don't understand why home ownership is superior to renting. Um, I don't know why we want to promote subsidize mortgages. I don't believe in the mortgage interest deduction. But, um, but I don't think that these uh, uh, dubious enterprises are a really major factor in the collapse. And the reason is that what they did um, was what, what all the, the banks were doing. You know, they, they, they have low interest rates, they can borrow cheaply, they, uh, they make loans, they know there's risk, but uh, you can't be in business without taking risks. So I don't, I don't think they acted really differently from the other companies. But, but Mr. Wallison's argument, as I understand, is that the government encouraged um, these companies, uh, these government-sponsored enterprise, maybe it coerced them in some way to make very risky loans, very risky mortgage loans, and that's uh, somehow um, that uh, and, and they responded to the pressure. They made these risky loans, and that in turn induced private. Uh, mortgage banks, mortgage lenders of all sorts, purchasers of securitized uh, mortgage debt to um, to also make these very risky uh, loans. And I don't see the link between um, what the um, what the government sponsored enterprise Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac did on the one hand and what um, the private lenders did. And the reason for that is if you have some some crazy company comes into some business and it says, well, I'm going to charge half of what anybody else has charged. Now, I can't really afford it. I'm risking bankruptcy, but, you know, maybe the government has encouraged me to sell uh, uh, bicycles at a big, at a, at, a, at a tremendous discount in order to reduce carbon emissions. So I'm going to do that. Well, this would not lead other manufacturers of bicycles to reduce their prices. It would lead them to exit the market because they, they, they don't want to court bankruptcy. So I think the fact that the other mortgage lenders, the, the, the completely private lenders, remained in the market um, was the reason was that they that that they thought it was a profitable business. Now it's true, and Mr. Wallace, I'm sure, will emphasize this, that uh, various well, the Community Reinvestment Act of 1987, all sorts of later initiatives by government did encourage or pressure even private lenders to relax their lending standards. But I don't think that kind of encouragement, when it's not in a, you know, a, a, a rule of law that I, a, a legislation actually requires that, would have that, that much uh, effect. I think these, well, you know, these, the bankers, I think, were, were, were trying to maximize profits and were not particularly influenced by government policy. Um, so, so that's where we differ, and I think we differ. And, but on other areas, uh, uh, Mr. Wallace has been ex very, very critical of a number of the solutions that have been suggested for our crisis. And, and generally, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to that. He makes a really good argument that the Federal Reserve, uh, having a long history of ineffectual regulation really oughtn't to be given new regulatory powers. And he has, you know, v very good reservations about um, the idea of a systemic regulator, some official or some agency which somehow uh, determines certain banks uh, cannot be permitted to fail, therefore they have to be under especially intrusive regulation. I'm very concerned that one of the costs of our of our situation is going to be a lot of uh, intrusive and foolish um, uh, regulation. I wish there'd be kind of a moratorium on regulatory reform until we climb out of the present economic pit uh, we're in. So, so I think we we uh, we agree on a lot, but. But I, I do think there is a disagreement in terms of the causal significance of these uh, uh, government-sponsored enterprises. So if I can disentangle myself and try to give Mr. Wallace the floor. I'm just glad to help him out. I've got a solution now. <laughs>
There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Here, we can try this if you want. Oh, that's really high tech. Okay, it is. <laughs> A binder clip. I like that.